Hello everyone, Dr. Victoria Skirbo here, speaking to you from the Caesar Transformation Healing Center in Wareham, Massachusetts. I am here to do the tarot scopes for the sign of Libra. There's Libra back there. Uh, for uh, Libra sun, Libra moon, Libra rising. Of course, Libra is a Venus rule sign. Um, Venus is in Gemini at this time, so Libras can feel, maybe even be a little more fickle than than they're known to be, or perhaps indecisive, a little more indecisive uh, than they're known to be. But then uh, um, Venus moves into Cancer, and um, there's a little bit less of, there's, there's more in its way a search for stability and emotional fulfillment um, for the Libra. We do have, um, we do have a full moon this month. We also have a new moon in Leo. Uh, at the end of the month. So let's see, for Libra, that would be your uh, house of friends, I believe. Your house of friends. Um, and so you may make some new friends or make some new plans with friends. Um, but that uh, will happen towards the end of the month. Um, the beginning of the month, Libra, the um, issues around family, and work perhaps there can be a push pull between you know time you want to spend with your family and the time you have to work there's definitely realizations around that um and also there can be um some issues with per parents uh or parental issues uh when we're in uh when we're dealing with that fourth and tenth house um it could also be um It, you could also be like financing um, financing something, the equity of something in order to improve something. You may take equity out in your house so that you can start a business or you may um, do some sort of business arrangement so you have a little bit more money to fix your house. Stuff like that, right? Okay. All right. But... Don't make any decisions while while uh, Mercury, I mean, while Venus is in Gemini. You can shop. Venus in Gemini is very much uh, window shopping. You don't want to necessarily go in the store, uh, but you want to see all the pretty things and get ideas, right? And then once it goes into Cancer, then you're like, okay, now I'm ready to feather my nest. Now that I've looked at all the pretty things. All right, so I am using the Elemental Tarot for this reading. And uh, probably I haven't decided on the Oracle deck yet. But I will let you know when the time presents itself. All right, let's see what we have here. We're starting off. Oh, I guess this is the one that wants to be here. All right, we have the Nine of Cups here. The Nine of Cups. This is like a whirlpool. Um, the Nine of Cups, you can feel kind of uh, a little bit out of control, right? A little bit out of control, but not necessarily in a bad way. The Nine of Cups is oftentimes getting your wish fulfilled. So there is, there is a wishes that are happening, wish fulfillment, but I think it's causing a little bit, it's maybe causing you to feel a little off kilter. Um, is it maybe like even thinking it could this be too good to be true? Let's see what's challenging that to see if in fact it is. Um, we have the six of cups here challenging the nine of cups. Six of cups can be child. It, it is associated with childhood. So it could be feelings from childhood that, um, maybe you never thought you could be that lucky or something like that. Um, or um, it could be family members warning you, maybe warning you not to get too too far into it. But I have to say, you're into it. So I don't. I think those. It's not that the warnings are going to fall on deaf ears for you, because I would never say that about Libra. But it's probably already too far along for you to change your mind now, so to speak. Um, at the root of this is the seven of swords. Somebody's not telling you everything. So if you're if you're a little bit um, 
if you're a little bit reticent about completely sort of going over the falls with whatever this, what seems to be happiness and, and all of this stuff, um, it's, I think it's good, it's good judgment on your part. Hold back a little bit. And if you need somebody to hold you back, family's always willing to, uh, <laughs> to do that, isn't it? All right. In the past, we have the four of cups. Um, there was a certain amount of dissatisfaction that you had, a certain amount of boredom. There was a certain amount of, and perhaps whatever this is, whatever this nine of cups is, uh, it could be a relationship for you that you just sort of like jumped into like head first or both feet and maybe it was a little bit too soon and you're like oh no I did this in the past am I doing it again should I trust this right but the reason that maybe you got involved was because you were a little bored previously we have the eight of cups in the um in the sky the eight of cups is abandonment um, in some, in some cases, but usually you abandoning a project that no longer fulfills you spiritually. Um, okay. I'm going to leave that there and see what else comes up in the immediate future. We have death, which is, uh, change transformation, having to let go of something. So there is something you're going to have to let go of, and it is something very emotional, and I believe it's a relationship, but I feel as though, um, you know, sometimes things just go away, and no matter what you do, no matter how much you wish and how much you hope, it's not going to change it, and so you got to kind of cut your losses, because the losses are already there, right? All right, let's see. Uh, how it's seen from the outside, a change in fortune, a change, a, a, a turning of the wheel. And I think I get the impression, I get the impression that people are happy to see that. Your domestic situation, uh, five of swords. Yeah, somebody is not, um, if, if you are thinking, uh, if you're thinking of a divorce or some sort of thing like that, um, because of cruelty, absolutely go for it. Um, if you're concerned about cruelty, um, but this is not a healthy energy to have in your domestic situation. It's not a healthy energy to have. So this may be, this may be what causes you to, or causes things to come to an end. Your hopes and fears of the moon. This is just, this can be depression. You know, who nobody's hoping for that. Um, it can be delusional, illusional thinking. Just like, just like the kind of like morose that you can't, you know, pull yourself out of in a way. In, in part because you don't understand where it's coming from. Like the moon is, can be deceptive because we think it's one thing, but it's actually another. Um, the outcome is the hermit. So you're going to need some time alone to, um, to heal, to, um, come to some sort of peace, uh, and some understanding, right? Uh, the hermit is a time of introspection, of finding the light within, but also, uh, it's a studious time. It can be a studious time. So you can... Um, you can maybe write something or create something or develop something that can be helpful to others who might have to go through the same, who might eventually go through the same situation as you do. You know, I think it was, um, oh, the Aries guy, uh, Ram Das, I think it was him who said, uh, we're only, we're just walking each other home. So somebody is going to need your help, just like you may need somebody else's help. So this is a time to maybe make the lessons something that you can pass on to help others. That's what I want to say. These are kind of tough cards. I will, I will say that. 
Um, let's look underneath it. Oh, okay, underneath it we have the Fool. And then the Three of Swords. And then the Four of Swords. So, um, very often, you know, the Three of Swords can be um, betrayal and sorrow and, you know, somebody's cheating on somebody, right? Um, but ultimately, um, it does free us. And so with the Fool and the Three of Swords, the other, whoever that other person is, was the Fool in this. It wasn't you. You weren't too high in the sky to, to not see it. You're a very reasonable person and um, you're a very reasonable person. So it's not something that you really missed. This, I think this person was being very, very deceptive. Um, and so you're, you're good. You're, you're, while, while it's difficult to go through and it's, it's always hard to say goodbye, especially to the dream that you had for something. Um, I think that uh, ultimately you're going to find yourself in a much better position, uh, certainly than the person who does this to you or did this to you. Now, this could be something that already happened. It doesn't mean that it has to happen right now. And if it has already happened, then maybe it's time for you to um, really figure out how you want to um, find a way to make those experiences be something that will be helpful to somebody else. Maybe you write a book. Maybe you write a novel. Maybe you write a comic book or draw a comic book, whatever, or a sculpture. You don't have to tell people the story per se, but you could, if you're a Venus ruled sign, you can create something of beauty. When I, um, I'll tell you a story. I had, um, I, I had, a, I wouldn't even call, I don't think I was, I wouldn't even call dating this guy. Um, but <laughs> Oh, true confessions. No, he was, um, it was very, there was a very much a chemical thing going on. So if you understand, you get my gist on that one. So it was kind of, it was more like a, a physical, um, decision made, not a decision in my head or certainly not a decision in my heart, but it was more of a body decision that I made to get involved, uh, with somebody. And, uh, he, uh, He ended up, he ended up, um, marrying my girlfriend who came to visit me. Um, and I lost a, I, the, the worst part of it was that I lost a friend over it. Although we're friends now, so I didn't really lose a friend. We just had many years apart, but, um, what it did for me as it really sort of, it was a very painful thing to go through. Um, because it wasn't just, it was like a double betrayal in a way. And so, um, but it was the thing that really turned my, myself around. And I stopped putting all my effort into other people when I could just as easily have put it into myself. Uh, but you have to learn the lesson. You have to learn the lesson. My south node is in Libra's house. So I know how difficult it is to leave, um, especially when you, it's a relationship where maybe you, you thought you could have been smarter or people might think you should have been smarter. Uh, Libras don't like to be seen in a negative light. I mean, nobody does, but nobody likes to be seen in a negative light. But some people take it to heart. And some people don't. And, and, and Libra can take it to heart. Don't do that. <laughs> don't take any of that to heart. All right. Let's see what... Uh, I'm going to use the Mystical Shaman. Let's see what the Mystical Shaman... Let's just pick a card from here. What do we have? The Medicine Wheel. The Medicine Wheel. Okay. Let's see what that says. I know how it feels. That's what I'm trying to say. You know, and this seems like to be a very specific reading. So if you're a Libra and this doesn't vibe to you at all, then leave it because this, I think this reading might be for a particular Libra or a couple of particular Libras. I don't know. You know, you never know why these things come up like this. I mean, you try to figure it out, but I, but it's, there's so many things. I mean, just, you know, go with it.
you know, it's funny. I'm married to an Aries with a Sag moon and he's very, very intuitive. And, um, and I'm a thinker. I'm, I have a seven soul. He has a nine soul and um, all ones and, and a nine soul. And I have a seven soul. Seven souls can be kind of ponderous. And I'm always thinking about the whys and the, not so much the what's. I've never really been interested in what was happening, but why it was happening always interested me. And uh, so I'm kind of ponderous. And he's just like, just live, just just enjoy it. It doesn't matter why. Just enjoy it. And, and I've and I've been able to both enjoy it and still be myself. So <laughs> why I told you that story. Anyway, uh, the medicine wheel is a sacred hoop uh, with the four cardinal directions well marked. And I want I might want to note to you that as a Libra, you are one of the cardinal directions. And I'm trying to see what oh, they have a hummingbird here. I'm guessing. That might be you, but we'll see. I, I mean, I don't know. Oh, maybe it'll tell us. Um, it has been used for millennium in indigenous cultures to bring harmony and well-being to the village. Its direction symbolizes the four steps the shaman takes to become a person of power and wisdom. To manifest clear blue skies in your life, it is important that you take a look at certain aspects of your being. Enter the medicine wheel from the south and reflect on how you are still clinging to events from the past. Continue to the West and notice which relationships are toxic and drain your energy. Step into the North and ask yourself, do I know my passion and do I show it? End at the East direction, visualizing how you want to live the next chapter of your life. It is up to you how much time you spend in each direction, minutes, days, or months, but when you are done, Make sure you step outside the wheel and contemplate your journey. The medicine. I'm getting chills all up and down. I don't know who this reading is for, but this is powerful. I'm all chilled. It says you must not postpone your healing journey any longer. It can be difficult to start, but you must find the inner strength to step uh, into the medicine wheel or, or you may lose your opportunity. There are many ways and many paths. Choose the one you resonate most with. Once you have found it, the only mistake you can make is not to follow it. Go boldly. Powerful. Everything's going to be all right. Okay, guys. <laughs> We're in, we're in challenging times. We're in challenging times. So be gentle with yourself, please. Have yourself a wonderful month. Like, subscribe, go window shopping, decide how you want to feather your nest. Make yourself happy. Yourself happy. Okay, Libra. I'll see you next month in August. <laughs> Namaste.